Good afternoon, everybody. How are y'all doing? <sighs> Yet another day. Not knowing if we're going to learn physics, biology. Not knowing if it's morning or afternoon. <sighs> um, can you please direct your funky breath in another direction? You're killing Lisa. <sighs> Just running out of oxygen. <clears throat> oh, stop the drama, girl. What? I agree. Um, you can breathe just fine, and you're not losing any oxygen. Believe it or not, Matt's breath is actually helping you get more oxygen. Um, I highly doubt that, and you told us plants are all we need for our oxygen anyway. Oh, uh, wow, I absolutely did not. I'm actually quite sure I said and sang that all living things depend on each other and, and their environment. Yes, we know, we know. Well, you put out carbon dioxide, and plants take that in to put out oxygen. Yes, and we take in oxygen and it's a cycle and blah, 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 blah. Oh yeah, blah. That's, that's called photosynthesis. It helps us breathe. Um, not really. So it's a great benefit that plants put out oxygen during photosynthesis, but that's actually not the goal. Just like during cellular respiration, the goal isn't to put out carbon dioxide. Those are actually both byproducts or waste. Look at the word photosynthesis. Photo means light and synthesis means to make. And if you think about our previous lesson on food chains, the goal here is energy. Plants use the chemical energy in water and carbon dioxide and use light energy to rearrange oh, oh my it into glucose and Ooh. oxygen gas. Why is that glucose so slow? But um, Rearrange? Um, what do you mean? Yeah, so this is called a chemical reaction, and I'm sure you'll learn about it in chemistry. You mean the class you teach? Right, like you teach <laughs> us everything. Uh, uh, chemical reactions are just the rearrangement of molecules, and they happen all of the time in your life. And we can represent them by chemical equations. They essentially tell the story of what happened. I like to think of it like cooking. You have things you start with, like the ingredients. These would be called the reactants. They're always on the left side. And then you have things you end with, the final product, and they would be called products. This arrow represents the actual reaction happening. Uh, where does all of this happen? Well, think about the structure that plants have that animals don't have. It must be there, right? Oh, the, the, the chloroplasts. Absolutely. Now, let's talk about it in more detail. Light is captured by this pigment. It's called chlorophyll. I'm sure you've heard of it. And that energy from light is used to split water. And this is where the oxygen comes from that plants give us. Most importantly, electron carriers are made. NADPH. Now, since this process requires light, we call these the light reactions. Then, with no light, the dark reactions. This usually happens at night. Carbon dioxide is taken in through the plant's stomata and glucose is produced. That glucose is ripped, okay? Right, if glucose has six carbons, where did they all come from? Because I only saw one carbon dioxide there. <laughs> right, good catch. To produce one glucose molecule, it will actually take six molecules of carbon dioxide and six molecules of water to make one glucose and six molecules of oxygen gas. Okay, that makes sense. And I can see the numbers are equal in the reactants and products. But um, how does this glucose turn into our energy? Like what? That jacked glucose has enough energy for <laughs> everyone. Well, when we eat food or when plants are done with photosynthesis, it's time for cellular respiration. And please hear me. Plants perform cellular respiration too. <sighs> okay, I guess no one brushes their teeth anymore. I'm calling your mama. But uh, that glucose and that oxygen moves towards the powerhouse, but it can't go in yet. Glucose has to be broken down during glycolysis, right in the cytoplasm. It's turned into a usable form and makes a small amount of ATP. Then it goes into the membrane of the mitochondria for what we call the Krebs cycle. And it's broken down further to release carbon dioxide 
as a waste product, but mainly to create more of those electron carriers we were talking about the last time. What the heck are those carriers for anyway? So random. The most important part, the electron transport chain. Ah, it's such a beautiful process. These carriers pass their negative electrons to a chain of proteins in the membrane, which then causes positive hydrogen ions to move across the membrane. And you may remember, once there's a high concentration of hydrogen on the other side. Oh, oh, they're going to move from high to low concentration. Right, but not through the plasma membrane. They're polar. They're going to have to pass through a very fancy enzyme called ATP synthase. And this creates a bunch of ATP for us. And that oxygen accepts those hydrogens, making... Ah, water. Wow, that, that was a lot. Yes, and please understand, I didn't even describe it in detail. So, again, if you want to learn more about the nitty-gritty of these steps, you can do that on your own. But the nitty-gritty isn't what's all that important right now. What's most important is why does all of this matter? And how does it all connect? We can't survive without plants, but their well-being is greatly influenced by us. What do you notice about the products of cellular respiration and the reactants of photosynthesis? Oh, they're the same. Exactly. Just being rearranged from one form to another. Well, brush your teeth or something, Matt, because clearly I need my Y'all oxygen. Keep trying okay? me in this class, and I don't know how I feel about it. <sighs> oxygen is very important, but while it's a product of photosynthesis, it isn't the goal of photosynthesis. But in respiration, it's very important. Whenever you struggle to breathe, whether it's a very hard workout or if you're holding your breath or trying to swim underwater, or even things more dangerous like suffocation or poisoning, that oxygen is there to accept those electrons and hydrogen to make water. And if it isn't there, those carriers give their electrons to something else and make alcohol for a little while, but eventually the chain doesn't produce enough ATP and the cell will die. And so will other cells and you know the rest. So take a deep breath in and thank a plant or any producer and thank yourself while you're at it because that energy is helping all of our cells to thrive, grow, divide so that we can survive which we'll talk about next class. Um, I thought we were learning about Newton's three laws next class. No, it's supposed to be about balancing chemical equations or something. No, uh, I'm your biology teacher. I thought you were out of physics teacher. You know, where's my transcript? Like, I've been in this class for almost two years, and, like, I don't Me have too. any grades. Like, right, I'm going to go to college. Like, wh every science subject. On? Like, I haven't learned social studies or English at this school in, like, years. Like, what type of school is this?